Hi, everybody. This is Tim PT, and welcome to the PT Podcast. This is October 28th. Right? 29th. 28th. 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 I'm lost. I'm Tomorrow's lost. Tomorrow's the 29th. Ta- tomorrow's the 29th. You said that, didn't you? Yep, I did. You, you did. probably just That's listen to Steve more lost. often. Yeah, no. Nobody yeah. listens to me. That would fix a lot. It would. It, it would, would fix a lot. Yeah. Fix a lot. Yep. Well, this is the PT Podcast brought to you by Crossroads Community Church in Lindale, Texas. Guess what? Today, we are talking about... Scary. Scary things. Scary. Oh my goodness. Oh no, I meant that to be boo, not. Boo. <laughs> I think it's supposed to go boo. That's the wrong boo. boo. Yeah, so yeah, wrong boo, boo. So you guys are probably boo. just here for the booze. <laughs> yeah. Oh I should I should have brought my cup. It says I want more booze. It says that. It's a scary cup. That's cute. Super scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were terrible jokes. Terrible yes. jokes. Hey, we're starting with a bang today. Obviously, <laughs> terrible jokes. And spirits. Yeah, listen, man, I, spirits. I'm right with you, man. We, we got the dad joke thing going on. I'm your host, <laughs> PT, spirits. with my obvious podcasting partners, the bald beauty, Steve Howard. What's up, Steve? How y'all doing out there in scary world? Scary, um, scary world. It's scary world. Scary world. Dude, it, is, it, is, it is a scary, scary world. world. We <laughs> live in scary. It's, it's, it's an election year, and um, <laughs> evidently it is getting really scary out yes. there. Holy corn. Yes. Uh, and we got <laughs> Joanna, the author the hey. youth pastor extraordinaire, Joanna Grace Boyles. And how are you doing? Hey. Book, book author. What's up, y'all? And, yeah. and last, hey, but, up, y'all? last but never least, even never though least. I think he was scared that I was going to skip him. No. no. Todd the Irishman Bergen. What's up? scared you. scared you. scared you. That was scary. I know. Oh, I know. I'm surrounded by children. <laughs> <laughs> I really want that sound. I'm going to have to search for the scar thing. It says, I'm surrounded by idiots. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah, be We've, cool. It would be cool. Yeah. yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. So oh, that's my button. We are. We've already addressed the live. We are. We are Facebooking live right now. Um, you're not going to be able to do it because you're listening into the podcast. But we do a live feed on my page, my personal page, uh, Tim Letch. That's T I M L E T S C H. Every Friday that yes. we do podcasts. But if you are listening and you want to just kind of give a scary story, anyways, the number is nine zero three four zero zero nine three eight seven. Once again, that's nine zero. Three four zero zero nine three eight seven, and even if you're listening to the podcast later on, feel free to call, leave a message, text any way you want to. Let me know the scary story that you got. We're going to be sharing those today. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about angels, demons, supernatural, and our fear that sometimes accompanies those things. And uh, in today's podcast, um, we're going to make sure that we're going to tackle some of the questions that go along with these things. But before we get started, <laughs> we're going to do another round of questions. We got two rounds of questions that we're going to be answering today. And I know that this is not necessarily the most fun for you guys, especially last week. Last no, week was kind of great. Last week was kind of hard. It was it tough. Was it's great. It's an opportunity for the audience to just get mm-hmm. to know us. Yes. Yeah. Do you, you, you want to be known? Cool. I do. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, this time, because, because, because you're so wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to let Todd go first. Okay. <laughs> nice. Wow. That was right. Wait a minute. Last wow. week I went first last week. That's because you're wonderful. He was looking oh. deep into your soul right then. I See, was. I bought into I it too. Mm. I, I thought for sure you were talking mm. about me. No. I was no. not. No. I was not. Steve. No, I was not talking about. Steve? I was talking about Todd. 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 No. So does that mean I get, I get to pick first? Yes, you get to pick first and answer first. Oh. And answer first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So if, I'm going <laughs> to pick Steve. Steve. Way, he, he still All has right. an opportunity to talk. Oh. Okay. You said you want people to know more about you. Oh, yes. okay. Here what we go. is the funniest or dis- most disappointing or weirdest text you've ever received? Pick one of those and tell me. Uh, I would say a, a text came across my phone one time. Because you guys know how you get these random calls. Mm. Oh, my somebody, gosh. And mm-hmm. somebody dials a number just one off or something, and they mm-hmm. send this text. Okay. And it says, you seriously need to get back together with me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Lord. 
<laughs> Jim, uh, who, you, who is this? <laughs> maybe one of your exes. That's what I was number. afraid of. That's what I was afraid of. And like, I was like, oh, no. Kim is testing you. No. <laughs> right? Tim, right? one of those right. burn numbers. Just I mean, to yeah. check to see. Yeah. Let's see if he's right. really. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my. It literally, it oh chills my. down my spine. I was like, oh, dang. No. No. Who is this? Negative. Ah! Negative. And since the number didn't Run. come up in my contacts. Did it come back as, I'm your greatest fan? I'm your number one fan. Actually, it didn't come back for a long time. Oh. So nothing was said. I'm just like in awe with a bunch of question marks there. And I tagged it a couple of times with question marks again. Question mark, question mark. Finally, they said, oh, sorry, wrong number. Thank you. Scary there for a second. Watch the bully there. All right, Joe, you're up. Uh, Tim. You, that, you gotta get rid of this one here yeah, and put this one over here. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna look. I'm just gonna read it. You ready? Okay. What's the cheesiest movie moment or line you can think of? You complete. Yeah, me. that was gonna be my answer oh. as well. <laughs> I hate that line. Oh my me. gosh, that is I, the best I, line ever. That's right. That's I'm right there with my no. my favorite is you. You had me at. I love you. Hello. Oh, hello. oh my gosh! Actually, usually steak. <laughs> well, listen, I'm gonna yeah, say Cameron Cr- Cameron Crow has had some great, great movies. That is a good movie, but right at the end of that thing, it is the most unrealistic. Un- uh, it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. About just the cheesiest. I love Cameron. Mm-hmm. I think he's a great writer, but that that was just a just not. Mm-hmm. No. no, 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 no. Jerry Maguire is a good movie though. I, I have to say, I enjoy that movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great movie. Yeah. It's a good movie. Well, it's not a great movie. There's, it's a good, but it's, it's a great, good movie. Show me the money is the best part of the movie. Quan, yeah. yeah. I like to air dry. That was hilarious. That's he gets, you know, yes. That yeah, is Cuba funny. Gooding Jr. He got an Oscar for that, by the way. Oh, for the wow. air dry? Yeah, what, what for that role? And, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was gonna say, who gets an Oscar just to? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's all it. you got to do. If you show it, Oscar. I'm just telling content, you, there's been worse things that have happened. It works. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right, Steve, you're up, man. All right, I'm gonna go with her, with, uh, with Joanna. Joanna. Wow. My just to brain. just to let the audience know, wow. to my left, wow. Steve's right is Joanna. She has a name. <laughs> Thank goodness. Wow. I think she's a writer too. I have a brain. All Steve? right, Scott. Here's your question. Okay, Scott. <laughs> That's not even my middle name. And this this one's perfect. This one's perfect for today. I'm glad you picked me, okay, Scott. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> We're changing his name. Hey, it's Steve. Okay. <laughs> no, we got to change it. Uh, who or where would you haunt if you were a ghost? Oh, where would Ooh, I haunt? Ooh, a good a one, right? Mm. I was proud of that one. Well, well, you know he. I love my mama very much. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Oh, right mama, now. Mama said, mama, mama said, probably my ex. <laughs> no, I'm <not>. scared. <laughs> He has a little bit of problem with unforgiveness. I know. Could you imagine just kind of going behind? They put a they put a cup close to the edge of the counter, and you just kind of knock it off as a ghost. You become a cat. Yes. Yes. To to, to Uh tap it off, Uh dude. That movie Ghost, man. I'm just telling you, that was way realistic. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just telling you. That's probably how it would happen. You go in, and you can have to work passing through the doors and the walls and you have oh, to yeah. it takes learn a lot it. of energy to learn. learn how to move pennies mm-hmm. and things like oh dude I, that that to this day is probably the most realistic version of being dragged down to hell oh right oh, that, that 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 portion where willie lopez gets he's he gets killed gets hit by the car spoiler alert and um <laughs> i don't know if you haven't seen it it came out in 1990 you're a bit late i'm just saying yeah. okay but this guy gets hit by a car and the good guy hadn't you know gone to heaven or whatnot yeah and so he's sitting there and he's you know freaking out that he's dead he sees his body and then all of a sudden this guttural groans come up from the yeah. ground and they start grabbing yeah. him and mm-hmm. i'm like mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't want any part of that. I just don't. No. don't want That's any right. That. For all you sinners out there, you might want to repent. <laughs> get yeah. it done and get back into the. It's way not of the reason the why. I'm telling you, it's a good place to start, but you it's not a good reason why. Well. Don't listen. All right, to I'm, 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 I'm obviously. I'm obviously choosing Todd. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's the funniest name that you can think of for a pet? <laughs> <laughs> Turd Ferguson. Turd <laughs> Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Wow, a first and a last name. Yes. <laughs> nice. Turd I Ferguson. I need my pet just a name. You give it a last name. Turd. 
Turd. Turd, Turd Ferguson. Turd. Is Spencer's last name uh, Fletch? No. 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 You haven't adopted him? No. I, my, yeah, I haven't adopted a name, but I ain't going to say it on air. Oh. <laughs> oh gotcha. Spencer, you beep, 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 beep. <laughs> yeah, it comes out often when he does things wrong. Yeah. But Mother. Don't, well, yeah, yeah. it's not a female. Mother dog, puss so bucket. Okay, one. so <laughs> in round two, we're going to start with um, st- mm. Steve. We're going to start with Steve. Steve, Steve you're going to pick somebody. i got to pick somebody. Again. Uh, he didn't have enough coffee now, this morning. I'm gonna, Just mm, so you know, this mm, is Joanna. Joanna. Right here. I'm going to pick Todd. Steve, nice you're gonna to meet you. Steve's going to pick me. I'm going to okay. pick Todd. All right, so what's the most awkward thing that has... That hat, no awkward <laughs> thing that happens to you on a regular basis. This moment, <laughs> the awkward thing that happens to me, your tongue gets tied. No, My, just uh, kidding, I doubt it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I knew it. Oh, uh, I'm farting in bins. public. I never do that. Really? Most awkward thing, um, I guess, just everybody likes to. Make fun of me, and it, it really hurts my feelings. Whatever, <laughs> Pansy, get over it. Steve, <laughs> no, um, let's see. You must unlearn. I don't know. You have to learn. I really don't let anything get too awkward. No, it's got to be something that it happens all the time. You, I know. All the time. So, like, if you oh. have to poop. Every day yeah. at nine o'clock. Oh, it takes me three hours to poop. Maybe that's probably, but that's not <laughs> awkward that much. Well, it's kind I of don't awkward. need. Why? What? Hey, dude, come on. <laughs> Listen, We're I don't need the word oversharing. I don't on need this to podcast. know. This is all about getting know, getting to know yeah. your podcast. <laughs> so if he doesn't call you back in three hours, you know what's going on. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome. Yes, you, you are. Have awkward. Let's see here. Mm. 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 I don't know. I know. What? Mm. I know. Something that happens quite a bit. Spill What's that? Spill so, so one day we were on my way to my apartment, driving down the road, and he's following me. Okay, and now I'm oh. driving particularly slow, slower, a lot slower than what I usually drive. Okay, I put my blinker on to 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 to, to turn, and I get in the lane to go turn, and I'm my, my blinker's well on at well two hundred feet before I'm supposed to turn. Okay, <laughs> and I start to turn, and I notice. <laughs> Steve's not there. Steve is passing me on the left. And so I call him. I go, dude, do you know where my apartment's at? And he's like, uh, no. Where are you, man? And I'm like, I just turned. Do you get lost? Yes, he get loses lost. time. Like, that when he's funny. driving, I space out sometimes. Really? So every day. Every That's day. Funny. Now, How do you know Lorraine, you Lorraine, if you're listening, <laughs> I want you to corroborate this story for me, okay? Mm. He sometimes can go blank and you don't know where he went. I and don't know where I went. He'll be drinking coffee right in front of you. Need and some be ginkgo. Like, you need some ginkgo, brother. Yeah, I do. I need some gango. Ginkgo. Ginko. He needs Ginko. some. Need some ginkgo. Ginkgo. Uh, whatever that is, I don't. Okay. I don't know. It sounds bad. It, it no, sounds no. like it's Chinese herb. It's good for you. Oh, okay. It, it helps a, you with your memory and your. Yeah. I do have. <clears throat> nobody picked you yet, dude. Oh. What are you doing? I have ADD. Okay, so that that's my answer for you. Uh-huh. As you see it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me give you my card. Exhibit yeah. A. <laughs> he just spaced out again. Uh-huh. Awkward. He's not with us. <laughs> I may, I may make, make other people awkward, but not me. I'm, Joe, I'm good. You're up. Uh, Todd. I uh, would love to help you out with that. Oh, it, you're already I done. You're done. already done. Okay, you I picked you last time, cards. so I have to. I have to pick Scott. Yep, Scott. Who's Scott? Scott. Oh. You are Scott. I get off today Scott. for her. You are <laughs> Steve Scott. Uh, I get off Scott free. <laughs> Okay. I got oh, no, you did not. He did. Just keep talking no. today. No. If you had a personal mascot, <laughs> yes. what would it be? Oh, Lord. Oh, personal. personal one. Oh. Mm. A foam middle finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? You know those cheese, those, what is it, the cheese fingers or the, oh. the big blue fingers that people have? Yeah. Mine might be a different one. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> couple of digits over. You're number two. There huh? are people at home right now that are. There, I can't believe he just said that. You. This is a Christian podcast. You're what a are you doing? Pastor for you should know better. Okay. All right. What is right. it? What's your mascot there, honey child? 
Okay, I'm just going to say, because other people have called me, probably a golden retriever. A golden retriever. Because okay. I, I have been told that I'm like a golden retriever with new people. I just I like new friends. It makes me I'm happy. I'm the same way. Yeah. I've been told so, of my golden retriever. That, okay. Too. So there you go. Yeah. That's really? my mascot. And I'm also an otter, too. No, that or a sloth. It's really a toss yeah. <laughs> Depending on the day. <laughs> Depending on the day. How much coffee? <laughs> Oh, oh, maybe, but maybe we digress. That's it. A coffee Todd, cup. you're up. Maybe that's it. You only got Steve or me, so I don't have no, any. I have no, one. that you just picked. Oh, okay. Yeah, she just da, picked. Da, da. I'm gonna. I'm actually. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Joe because she's got two over there. Oh no, I just haven't given that one back. I'm holding oh. on to that one. Oh, I don't know okay. why. There, I'm taking. Okay. Um. Okay, Todd. Da, da. What mm-hmm. is Todd? Da, da. The da, da. worst. The worst pickup line you have ever heard or dished out. Oh, oh yes, this is preferably good. one that you've dished out. Yes, preferably we want to hear one. one. I, dished out. I don't think that was part of the card there, oh, Joe. Wow. No, <laughs> that's just personal preferences. No, right, right, I don't think right. you. I don't think uh, you can do that. I don't think that's fair. Let's, let's, let's think here. What's a good one? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've used so many. <laughs> <laughs> Poor know, Kim. You know, uh, before Kim, I was a. a a stallion. You a ladies' man. I was a stallion. You were a stallion. Well, at least a pony. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely. Some people called me horses. There's that button when I need it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Better than a jack. Here, right? I mean, I guess when I when I watch the movie Switch, you know. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, I, I, I think about uh, that one guy that was trying to hit on that one chick, the reporter. And he was trying to cop out so many, so many lines. And finally, Will Smith just kind of comes up and goes, you know, dude, she's not interested. <laughs> yeah. And I think about times where I tried to use a, a line, and it usually starts with something personal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, you got nice hair. I mean, really, nice hair. I like your hair. Your hair, <laughs> yeah, it's so flowy. But now I'll tell I'll tell the viewers about me a little bit. This a little piece if people didn't know. Some people do know this about me, as I'm kind of a shoe whore. And so, once in a while, I'll come across a woman with these nice shoes on, and I'll be like, "Dang, look at those shoes!" I'll be tell my wife, "Hey, check those shoes out." She gets a little weird on me, but yeah. That's awkward. That's yeah. nice shoes. Yeah. Nice shoes. I actually, I actually in an, yeah, me and my wife, we were out one time and I, uh, I saw this I one like lady. I like cool shoes too. Right? And this I used one to lady, sell shoes. Will you let him finish for the love of Pete? <laughs> one lady had these really nice shoes. They were really cool. Don't let him so, take them off sometimes. No, no, I didn't let him. I, yeah, I just, I, she, was having so dinner with, she was having dinner with her husband and so I walked up and I said, hey, those are some really nice shoes. Can I take a picture of your foot? Yeah, <laughs> you did not. I did, and my wife. You did not. My wife sat there oh. in the restaurant, like, "Oh my god, Todd, no! that's so creepy. Wow. That's so sketchy, right? So sketchy." But I don't have. But I don't have a foot fetish. Don't what get me she wrong. Tell you I'm not the about shoe? feet. I'm about the shoe. What? No, no. Uh, he probably would have, but he, he didn't. He didn't. just. He just kind of laughed at me. <laughs> I wonder why. That's crazy. Right. Right. There's a shoe in. <laughs> So, I, did I answer your question? I guess, you know, I've got a freaking pervert. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. So, who's left? Who's you got one? What you, shoes. you do. You I'm the only one, one left. I've got to answer my own question. No. I can I can ask you your jo- question. Joe, have you asked? Yes, mine was the mascot. You're the mascot. I was. So, it's me. How did, how did that think? work? I don't know. I don't know. Everybody. Oh. I must have rubbed off on y'all's. No, he probably had ADD and turned his in and nobody yeah, checked it. So go ahead. Wrong. Go ahead. Okay. So if you could jump into a pool full of something, what would it be? Oh, I know this. I know the answer. I know the I know answer to this one. Jesus. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Way to get religious. No. Well, after that no. perverted pickup line, can I take a picture what? of your feet? No, it's shoes. shoes. Whatever. Shoes. Shoes. He said, there can I take a picture of your feet? I did say it. Can I take a picture of your foot? Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, see, I told you. I, I, I didn't want her to think like I was taking a picture of her life. Uh, I would like to jump into a pool of probably noodles. That would be pretty noodles? cool. Noodles? Yeah, yeah, like spaghetti noodles? Yeah, right? Yeah. With, with butter. Yeah, with butter. Cool. With butter. No, I don't care about the butter part. Oh, come on. Oil, maybe. Then they stick to you. Oil. No, that's why you use the butter. They, no, they just use oil, like, vegetable like, no oil, butter. or something like that. Something that. That way, if you want a snack, you just ask for some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of salt and pepper. Done. Yeah. Right? No. 
No, I'm not eating it after no. I jump in it. That's oh, for that's sure. grody. Yeah. Well, no, you eat the, you eat the section that's... No, it's it's gross, guys. Side. That's gross. All right, well, that was an interesting, really interesting... Um, okay. Uh, yeah, that was scary. Good grief. I'm I like, actually feel dumber after that. I'll be honest with you. I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel like I lost some brain lost cells right then. I feel smarter now. <laughs> you do? Mm-hmm. Are you awake? Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve feels awake. All right. So today we are going to be tackling uh, a sometimes creepy and never boring subject of angels, demons, ghosts, and the supernatural and the fear that oftentimes comes with it. Mm-hmm. And I want to start with scripture to set the tone for the rest of the talk. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So that should tell you where our battle lies. And when we yes. start talking about these things, one of the things that people um, really battle with is the fact that um, this is stuff they can't see. This is stuff that's happening around them that they can't control. And so they start freaking out about that stuff. And we need to remember that the, the war is not battled with your hands, is not battled with your mm-hmm. your, your guns, your coffee, or ginkgo, or whatever we're talking about. I need oh, it, some ginkgo. Yes, I think you do. Um Random man. <laughs> All right. So uh, then, uh, then we got a, a Hebrews chapter thirteen, verse two. It says, "Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby yeah. some have entertained angels mm-hmm. unawares." And then Mark chapter five. Um, and I'm going to read all 20 verses of this. This is the demon-possessed man. They came to the other side of the sea into the region of the Gerasenes. And when he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. Him is Jesus, by the way. Mm -hmm. He lived among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore, not even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, Mm -hmm. night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and cutting himself with stones. I just want to, I want to just point that out that he was cutting himself. Just saying. Mm-hmm. I hope they were river rocks. <laughs> Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed before him, and shouting with a loud voice, he said, "What business do you have with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me." For he had already been saying to him, "Come out of the man, you unclean spirit." And he was asking him, what is your name? This is Jesus asking him these questions and commanding. And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send him out of the region. Now there was a large herd of pigs feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons begged him saying, send us into the pigs mm-hmm. so that we may enter them. As Jesus gave them permission and coming out, the unclean spirits entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about 2,000 of them, 2,000 pigs. Mm-hmm. And they were drowned in the sea. And the herdsmen ran away and reported into the city and the countryside, and the people came to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had previously had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man Mm -hmm. and all about the pigs. And they began to beg, beg him to leave their region. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was begging him that he might accompany him, and he did not let him. But he said, go to your home, to your people, and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what a great thing Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll read this to, to give you, first of all, the battle mm-hmm. is spiritual. It's not a battle that you need to war with your no. guns and your knives and your physical form and all that other good stuff. We realize that pretty much everything that happens spiritually, um, that it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to take care of. It's going to have to be um, the Lord, and it's a spiritual battle. Uh, the next thing that we need to talk about are what are the differences between these things? Mm-hmm. We talk about angels, demons, and then we'll talk about ghosts and phantasmas. So a- a- angel is angelos. It's a messenger, an envoy. Mm-hmm. One who is sent, an angel, a messenger from God. What is a demon? It's a D A I M O N, diamond, uh, which is an evil spirit in the New Testament. Then there's a ghost, a phantasma, an apparition or a specter. Um, and then what is the supernatural? It means super or beyond the natural or manifestation mm-hmm. or event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding or the laws of nature. Now, obviously, there are books, articles, movies, broadcasts, podcasts, television shows. There's 
go to Discovery Plus and you'll mm-hmm. see every paranormal stinking mm-hmm. thing out there that you possibly yeah. can find. And it's all relating to this topic. It's way too broad to cover in one podcast. Yeah. Let me do my pastor thing right off the bat. Okay. okay. Uh-oh. Do not. Don't. Don't. Do not do it. No! Don't do it. Don't delve into supernatural things like no. demons and spiritual warfare if you do not have a personal one-on-one relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just just warning you, Mm-mm. you're playing with fire. Yep. You yes. are. You're playing with you're things that can reach door. out and hurt you, okay? Now, the Bible yeah. obviously recognizes that there is something happening outside of our purview. Mm-hmm. Angels fighting demons, a supernatural war, so to speak. So our souls are a source of contention in the heavenlies, and we've got to choose which side we're going to fight on. So I would go so far as to say... Where you place your faith, your, your life, and on the way the, the way you live is kind of declaring which side you're siding with. And if you don't have the main thing, don't go searching and seeking to experience the supernatural because you're you're way outside of the confines of security in that capacity. If you don't have a personal relationship, if you're not abiding in God, you don't have protection enough to be looking for those kinds of things. That being said, I know that some of you listening today and you're curious as to what is real and what is not. Some of you are extraordinarily skeptical. I know that I'm skeptical about some things. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen the show. I've seen people fake things. And I've also seen some things that will, you know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, make you make you wonder. Okay, mm-hmm. so before we get into that, let's talk through the host today. Uh, what are some experiences that you've had with some of these? And we could start with Steve-O, uh, bald beauty here. Okay, uh, give me an experience that you might have had spiritually. Maybe you know angels, demons, maybe something supernatural, maybe a scary story that you got. Okay, that has evoked fear, but you know, recognize it as supernatural. What do you think? Well, my my mother tells the story whenever she had her. Um, uh, blood clots in her legs. Um, she was in the operating room, and she said there was a lady in the operating room talking to her while she was going through through the uh, surgery, and she they, confirming her that she's going to be okay. It's not her time to go. And she asked the people, "Was there another person in the operating room?" And whenever she, you know. They got finished and said, no, there was nobody else in the operating room. So I believe that she did have some type of a angel or some something from God that gave her confirmation that, that, that she was going to be okay. Because it was a mm-hmm. pretty pretty big surgery. She had several big blood clots that uh, that, that would have gotten to her heart. She would have she would have died. Wow. And it was caused by a crazy, um, they, they were in uh, uh, South I think it was Puerto Rico or something. Anyway, they were somewhere. It's fairly recently. Wasn't yeah, that it? wasn't yeah. that long ago. Yeah, and she got bit by a, a spider that, um, and it caused her to have all these blood clots. Oh my gosh! Wow, wow. it's like a real life arachnophobia yeah. thing. Yeah, Ew. it was like a real life arachnophobia. Caused her, caused her blood to coagulate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just, and it, it, uh, um, it almost killed her. I mean, it, dang. Yeah, it was. She's a miracle right now. Yeah. She's a miracle. Um, and you said that in the room that there was an angelic presence or yes, somebody there. There was an angelic presence there, and it was giving her confirmation. It's not her time to go. And she's going to be okay. Um, she can tell the story much better because it's her story. Sure. But, but yeah, it's it's a beautiful story of, of, of God being there with her whenever she was, you know, needing that affirmation. And uh, just that's awesome. Her, just letting her know that it's you know I'm not I'm not finished. You you've still got more work to do. Wow. Yep. Um, All right, Todd, what you got, man? Tried to take her out, but couldn't. Yeah, couldn't. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. What was the question? Look. <laughs> so not Steve. Evidently, is not the only one that needs ginkgo. <laughs> Yeah, I'm <laughs> doing something. I, just a I think it was. Uh, I can't remember Steve? either. Steve. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm. All right. <laughs> so as far as angels and demons, I mean. I'm going to tell a story kind of like I told. Uh, oh, yeah, but they didn't, they didn't get to hear it. because oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Tell the story. Right. So, okay, so the story, w- yeah, the story went, when we first moved here, we um, we looked for, like, the, the ghost tours because we wanted to see, well, let's see what let's see what Texas is all about. Coming from Washington, you have all these ghost towns up there on uh-huh. the east side of the mountains. And so it's like, okay, we're in Texas. We, we'd looked them up, and we'd seen all these, and so we picked one that was – for Tyler and so we went on this little tour and the guy was like yeah you know 
we see things, we hear things. You'll 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 probably witness something. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we had gone through all these places, and you know, he'd say, yeah, you'll probably see some orbs over here, and I'm like, orbs, okay. And I'd take pictures, and yeah, they either dust on my lens or I don't dust. Know. Yeah, dust, right? dust, dust. So then. We went by the old Soldier Fort and uh, by Waterburger and 271 or something like that. Oh, yeah, that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And then we left that because we didn't really see anything. I was like, man, I really want to see something. I want to see like an old soldier, you know, walking along and kind of like, hey, what's up? You know, <laughs> no, none of that. None of that. Didn't get any no vibes. No old soldiers? Nope. Didn't get any Shocker. of that. Shocker. I was really bummed. Oh, no. And he's no. like, well, we're going to go to an old warehouse and there's been a lot of activity. You know, we get, we've done our little test. We've used our little devices and we've we've sensed a presence okay and i said oh all right cool right on all right so we go to this place and uh we're looking into a dark cavern area of the warehouse and he's like all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna say something to the spirit and uh i'm gonna kind of provoke it okay so Mm -hmm. don't be alarmed at what i say okay no problem and I'm thinking, as long as you're not out there doing a seance or something, yeah, that, that can be a little. That can be a little weird. Yeah, I so might be alone. Again, right? I don't know what the difference is between a seance and invoking the spirit, but I'm just going to tell you, there's not much of a difference there. Yeah. Somebody that I decides think, they want to uh-huh. try to communicate with something that isn't, yeah, is that alive? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, so he he pipes up and he's yelling. You know, he's kind of in in a vulgar, slight, hostile way. Trying to get a rise out of the spirit. Right, right. So then he'd stop talking and we'd listen. I don't hear anything. And he'd be like, let me try it again. (laughs) Not all right. (laughs) So he tries it one more time. Now, meanwhile, we've got our phones going because we're like, we're going to hear something. I'm going to make sure we record it. Mm -hmm. And so finally he, he says something and I can't remember exactly what he said. But anyways, and he shuts up. And all of a sudden you hear this, get out. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> That's probably not what you said. You probably said, <laughs> yeah. yeah you're right. You're right. I, I didn't say crap. Did you go? Did yeah. you leave? No. Heck no. I was like, dude, do you hear that? And then the other people that were with us, they're like, yeah, I got it on tape. I mean, I got it on. I let, let's, let's, let's listen to it. And so we played it back right there sitting there. And about the same time we were playing it back, get out. And I'm like. Oh, we gotta go. <laughs> what, what, what he's not telling you is there was an old lady that was there that was protecting the fort. Um, right. She's still alive, yeah. but she was telling him, You're not supposed to be here. Get, get, out, of here. get, out, get out, out of here. Get out of here. Get out. I'm calling the cops. Yeah. Yeah. See, what I always think is funny is you, these voices that are coming out, like, Yeah. You know, the yeah. outlet. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, because if it would have been something like, uh, You're not supposed to be here, uh, get <laughs> out. It'd be like, What in the world was that? I don't, I don't right. get it. Hey. So. Th- Obviously, Todd's seeing things now. He's yeah, starting to grab the air. I was going to grab that orb. I was going to grab that orb. Okay, so I want to tell one more story because well, this, this is the good side. This is the this is the the angel side. Angels. So you think that was demonic? I think it was demonic. Okay, yeah, it was a little strange. Okay, a little little strange stretch there. So you, so, you, you believe in demons? Oh uh, well, you know. I all right, believe, mm-hmm. I believe that there's there's some weird guys out there doing mm-hmm. the wrong things. Anyways, because somebody gives me flat tires, I'm just saying. Okay. I, I, I get a flat tire every now and then, and I, I know it's, uh, it's got to be a demon. Right. It's got to be a yeah. demon. So everybody knows that I had a heart attack not too long ago. Yes. So on my way to the hospital, actually, not in the hospital. It was actually in the. I was waiting for my wife to get in the car, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Lord." <laughs> Lord. Lord. Were you grab at him too? <laughs> you grab trying to Lord. touch the hem of his garment. Were you trying <laughs> to touch him? <laughs> Lord. What just happened? Lord. <laughs> Lord. I was trying to grab his attention. There's a gnat flying around in this room, by the way. He's he's it looks like he's he's been on LSD, but it's not it's not. So, oh my god. It's so hot in here. <laughs> Lord. So, anyways, so I'm like as I'm as I'm clenching my clenching my chest and it's hurting like crazy, like mm-hmm. mad dog, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, this is it, this is it, this is it. And I'm like, Lord, is this it? And also, I got kind of this confirmation. No, not yet. But you're gonna feel this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was right. Wow. Oh yeah. man. And then of course, my wife, she drove like a saint. 
Going through Tyler. <laughs> stopped at all the lights. <laughs> <laughs> 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, you know. Mm-mm. 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. I'm like, yeah. It was funny, too, because I put up with it for a few. <laughs> and then it was like, go through those <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was I was ready to blow. I had it. I was ready for attack. you. Literally having a heart attack. You were having a heart attack. <gasps> yes. Mm. Yeah. That the rules are meant to be broken, especially if somebody's dying. Go ahead and run the light. It's okay as long as there's nobody coming and you're going to be in bad right. shape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though I had confirmation from the Lord that He said it's going to be okay. <laughs> you're just going to hurt. Mm-hmm. And He was like I said, 100 percent right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's other things that he shared the last time that we talked about this about he was in a river and the rock almost ran him over. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we I remember doing, that. That's right. I remember you were digging for gold. That's right. We were gold. We were about we almost were dredging. That's yeah. right. And you almost that was got fun. And it was like somebody yeah. pulled me backwards. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, that was I, pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, I got. So he's the Bruce crazy. Willis of C3 Lindale. Um, yes. Unbreakable. <laughs> I <laughs> see. Oh, I don't know about unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. One, let's, let's one fight with a log out. and that'll fix that's that. Right. Yeah. Uh, he busted me up. Really All good. right, Joe, you're up. <laughs> what have you written in your books? No, don't do that. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> nah. No. There's not a lot. There's not There's not ghostesses in my books. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need to add some ghosts uh, in there. So I, I, I firmly believe that there, there are spirits, and there are spirits attached to things, and mm-hmm. that certain people can definitely, whether intentionally or unintentionally, invite mm-hmm. evil spirits into into their life. Just like we as Christians can invite the Holy Spirit into our mm-hmm. life, we can invite good spirits into our life. But, um, so I've. Ever since childhood, I've been very aware of that, that mm. there was a lot more going on yeah. than what I could see. Um, and we had uh, this house down the road, and there was two kids that lived there. And um, it was like the grandma lived out front, and the kids lived with grandma. And then there was a, a trailer house in the back. Mm. And it was a white trailer house, kind of catty corner. It looked like they just kind of shoved it in there real quick, you know. And... Uh, I would Speaking always, I would always tell my mom, "That's the red house," and she's like, "What are you, what are you talking about?" She's like, "You're talking about about the the grandma's house up front because it it was it was painted red." And I said, "No, the red house is in the back," and she's like, "What are you talking about?" And like, never could you like get it through. She she always just thought I was talking about the grandma's house because it was painted red. Well, the parents that lived in the back trailer the dad took a knife to the mom and then to himself Ooh, dang! and one of the comments was it looked like they painted the trailer red, red. on Ooh. the inside oh my and Excuse that me. that right there from that because i i never could figure out even as a kid i don't know why it's red i just know it's red she's like have you ever been inside nope never been in there we, we'd go to grandma's house but we're not we're not welcome in their house we don't go back there. Wow. So that freaked me out at a oh, very wow. early age of, okay, there's oh there's definitely other things going on here. And mm. how did I know that as a kid? And, mm. and what what does that mean? And Wow. So mm. unfortunately, very mm. aware of those things. No, no fun. Mm-mm. No fun. Mm. Scary, scary. That's, that's scary. no fun. No, 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 mm. no, 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 no. You know, but it's weird because, you know, we all kind of have a sixth sense, don't we? Because we walk into certain things and all of a sudden your hair is on the back of your neck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are those moments where you go, okay, Lord, no, what are you guys <laughs> <Yeah>. doing here? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah. uh, go the other way. Go the other way. Don't, yeah. don't know what you're trying to warn well, me of. I think, I, think my some, sign? I, I think that there's going to be a bleed over um, because we're in a not of. Um, mm-hmm. And so you, you you're not you're never going to be untouchable as far as there's, there's going to be, <laughs> you're going to feel the effects of the spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's part of it. But people, I, I, I just need you to understand that just because it's going on and you can't see it, doesn't mean that it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, it doesn't mean that you're, well, I have this probably the, one of the most, and to be honest with you, and now that I'm getting older, um, I, I, I firmly believe that this was a, not only an allowance from the Lord for this to bleed over, but also a warning about things that were to come later on. Now that I mm-hmm. I know what's going on, I, I had a I had a buddy that was staying with me, 
and um, he he had some pretty severe issues in his life coming out of Dallas, coming to where we were living, and um, I was I, I call it rescuing, but it it wasn't. I I, I don't know if that's what it's called. Um, Ooh, somebody's somebody's calling with a. Yeah, and um, Ashley wants to tell a story too. Whenever we start taking calls, so. okay. So Ashley, when we when we get, I don't know if this is you or not, but I'm not going to answer this one yet. We're going to finish this one, and then we'll we'll, we'll get to you. Okay. So um, one of the things that um, we have uh, always tried to do is, if somebody calls, especially from somebody that is from our our, our past or some of my friends that we've been, we wanted to make sure that we were available to them if they needed help. And so this guy had called and was like, "Listen, um, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a, an issue," and I. I really want to get out of this thing. And he had been, he'd been cutting himself. He'd been mm-hmm. uh, involved in drugs. He'd been involved in homosexuality and uh, he was just ready to get away from that environment. And so when I asked him, I said, if you want me to come and get you, I'm going to, you're going to have to leave. You're going to have to get out of that. You're going to have mm-hmm. to not do that anymore. And you're coming to my house. What you're going to do is you're going to come, you're going to live with us, but you're going to go to church. You're going to make sure that we're, you know, devoting into spiritual time, that kind of stuff. So he agreed to all that stuff and he came and started to live with us. And it was great. It was great for about three or four months. Um, and he got a job. He was working in in, in, a, in a diner there in, in the city that we were living. Uh, and he, he's a great guy. I, I love the guy. Still love the guy. Um, and still would do anything if he was to call and say, I need to get out of it again. I, I still would do this. But he came and started living with us. My kids were really young and still living in the same room. Mm-hmm. So, um, And he was living in the guest bedroom um, on the other side of the house. And so I remember coming home one night. Um, and we had, I think we'd been in a fade strange practice or something like that. And he had j- just gotten off and he was sitting the way the living room was set up. The couch was the back of the couch was facing the hallway, which is behind the couch. And then there was a love seat on the wall to the, to the left of the couch. And he was sitting there and the television was up on the wall and we could all the whole room could look at the television and everybody that was walking down the hall could see the television. And so I got was sitting there on the on the couch and he was sitting on the love seat and he had his legs draped over the love seat and he was watching the television program. I think it was the news or something like that. And I was laying on the couch and I fell asleep. Now where I fell asleep, I had fallen asleep with my my head at the where the hallway is coming out. My head was right there where the hallway was. Okay. So I fallen asleep and I was watching television and I fell asleep and I I kind of opened my eyes a little bit and I was on the opposite. My head was on the opposite side of the couch and my feet were at where the hallway was. And I looked and I saw the guy sitting there. I'm trying not to say his name, but the guy sitting there and he was asleep and I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden I can see as I'm looking at Brian, I see out of the peripheral of my eye, this shadow that comes out of the hallway and it's dark and it's ominous. And I, 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 I do the freeze thing, you know, where mm-hmm. you can't, I can't scream. Mm-hmm. I can't do anything. I'm a, uh, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And so it comes out of the hallway and it's, I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it's demonic. I already know it's demonic. So it puts his hand on my leg. And as it grabs my leg, every suicidal, depressive, everything thought starts mm. just mm-hmm. raising through my mm-hmm. head. And I immediately go oh, like that. And I raise up and I'm on the opposite end. When I wake up, I'm still getting heebies from it. Oh my God. Um, pull up and I'm up on the other opposite end when I'm mm-hmm. waking up and br- the guy's sitting there staring at me and he looks at me, he goes, what did you just do? What happened? And I go and I tell him and he goes, I had a, I had a dream that dogs were chasing me and they were about to kill me. Okay. Now we both kind of mm-hmm. compared notes and we're sitting there going through it. And in my head, I'm going, I have got to pray because I know mm-hmm. that there's something in this house that mm-hmm. we need to, mm-hmm. we need to deal with. Okay. Mm-hmm. It would have been just happenstance in my brain if the next day my father calls and he goes, in the middle of the night last night, I, I woke up and I, 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 needed mm-hmm. to, I needed to pray for you. Are you okay? And I said, what happened? What are you? He goes, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you that we had, I, I needed to get up and I needed to pray for you. I'm going to make sure that you're okay this morning. I didn't mm-hmm. call him. I didn't say anything to him. He just called wow. and made sure that we were okay. Wow. So the reason why I say that it is preparation, mm-hmm. because things happened with this guy later on down the road that were 
conducive to that line of thought. And, and I believe that the Lord was preparing us for that. But also, I don't know if we dealt with it the way that we should have, because I think it lingered and was attacking mm-hmm. my, my kids. Um, mm-hmm. And and so I, I firmly believe that this spiritual attack whether it be depression, suicidal thoughts, I think that it is rampant in East Texas a lot. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the history of Lindale and you look at the history of Van and the surrounding areas, that there's a lot of teenage suicide that happens. I can count on my hand um, at least mm-hmm. one a year for the last, I don't know how many years mm-hmm. in Lindale alone. Okay, so I, I think that this is a spiritual attack on 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 not only the city but our, our kids, and that we need to be really wary. But that was a that was probably one of the more terrifying experiences of my life mm-hmm. when it comes to spiritual attacks and mm-hmm. and supernatural stuff. Now, I, like I said, I've seen the show. I, some of you guys get scared when it comes to people speaking in tongues, or I, I've seen all that mm-hmm. stuff. I've seen Jericho marches. Mm-hmm. I've seen people. I've seen people start speaking in tongues and actually other people understand what they're saying mm-hmm. and, and people of other nationalities. And I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's, um, it's amazing to me uh, how interesting uh, people get mm-hmm. when they start getting scared. Of the, okay. So now I'm mm-hmm. going to open this up as soon as I can uh, <laughs> um, get this. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to open up the call. And if you're out there and you want to call and share a story, I'm going to see if we can get this thing to work. We're going to try here. And if you're doing it, go ahead and call me and we're going to, if anybody has anything else they want to share, um, feel free. Yeah. Whoever called earlier, call back. Yeah. Call back. Come on now. That right, here it comes. Here it comes. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. This is Tim. You're on the air. What's up? Oh, are you there? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's try this. This is Tim. You're on the Press air. Press one to start the call or two to decline. Yeah. Press one to start the call. The call will start at the beep. There it is. Hi, this is Tim. Hi. Who's hey, this? Hey, Tim. It's Ashley. Hi, Ashley. How hey. are you doing? Hey, hey Ashley. Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Um, hey, guys. <laughs> I'm really enjoying y'all's podcast, though. Well, we're enjoying. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank, Love you. Yes, thank you. So what you so got for us? I, you know, well, I've got something good for you. So... I was saved um, a little bit less than 12 years ago. And at the time, we were going through um, a CPS battle. So it was the night before I had court, and I was alone in my living room praying and praying and praying. I think the hardest I've ever prayed. Mm -hmm. And I opened my eyes, and I saw a figure... And out of my mouth was tongues. I knew my mouth wasn't speaking English, but I knew what I was saying. But there was a figure there, and I, I don't want to say it was Jesus, but it was man-like, and it was glowing. Mm. And it was telling me everything was going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And good. the next day, my kids were given back to me, and my oh, life has Lord. forever been changed. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. So I don't know if that was an angel. I don't know if that was Jesus himself, but I know it was good. Well, if it was sent, and I have, if it was sent, then I've, obviously was I've an never, angel. It's an angel. Yeah. Yes, and I've never ever spoken tongues since wow. that day. I've never hmm. ever, and that was by myself. And I, I felt my mouth moving, and I heard it in my head. My prayer. But I've never spoken tongues before, and I never have since. Wow. Wow. That's a cool story, man. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's a cool story. Did, well, did it, did it, it was a long time ago. <laughs> did, it, uh, did, it evoke, did it evoke fear when you first started, or were you were you at calm? No, or? I was in complete peace. Very cool. Well, thanks for that. It was very cool. Thanks for that story, Ashley. I really, yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, somebody's going to hear that and, and uh, be at peace at some of these things that come out. So I appreciate the, you, you sharing it with us. All right. Well, we're going yeah, to- absolutely. I love what you guys are doing. Y'all have fun. We, we, I don't think there's any other option with these cats. So I'm just telling you right now. I know. Y'all are great. You make me laugh. Uh, All right, we'll thanks talk for to watching, you. Ashley. We'll yes, talk to you later, Ashley. Yes. Thanks for sharing. God bless. Bye-bye. You, you Bye. too. 
Wow, that's a pretty cool story. Yeah, yeah cool. pretty cool story. Well, if you got any anybody else calling and wanting to share a story, you guys feel free. Uh, yeah. The number, if I can pull it back up again, I don't think I can. 903-400-9387. Is it four? Oh, it is 400. Yep. Just kidding. 903-400-9387. Uh, I did. And Phil, yes, yes, she did, because you don't usually know what you're talking about. Anyway, I'm just playing. Whoa. That's a joke. That's a joke. Whoa. That's a joke. All right, so that being said, uh, uh, obviously, um, when we start talking about... Oh, oh, there's another call. Oh, no. Oh. We'll go through this whole rigmarole again. Let's see here. Hello. Are you there? Hold Hi. on, let me make sure that we're doing this you? right. Call or two to decline. Okay, I got the you. The call will start at the beep. Hi, this is Tim. You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Who's this? <laughs> It's Carla. Dr. Mom. Hi, Dr. Mom. <laughs> oh, Dr. I know Mom. that voice. Hi, Dr. Mom. Dr. Mom. That's my mom. Hi. Hi. Maybe she didn't. My mama. Really yeah, that's her. his mama, mama, mama unfortunately. Say, mama say it. No, unfortunately. Not yeah. nothing unfortunate about it. There's nothing for it. So, so, Mom, you obviously got, I know you've got some great stories, uh, but mm. uh, go ahead and give me some. Give me, give me. Okay. Well, um, when I was, I was talking about, um, I was thinking when people were talking about their experiences, how that um, people can believe they, but they want to believe in the negative aspects of spirituality, but they don't. They don't constant. I mean, they they say they don't believe in God, but they believe in spirit. So mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. No. But I can I can attest and as I can testify to the fact that there are both sides of that. Yeah. Uh, I have experienced both in my lifetime, mm -hmm. many, many times. Mm -hmm. um, my father was um, my father was a minister, of course, and so he had a woman come to our service one time, and after the service was over, she tried to kill him, mm -hmm. and because she was possessed of the devil, That's and cool. it was the spirit of the the spirit of the Lord that protected him that that fought his battle for him mm -hmm. he he quoted scripture and that that she dropped her knife and went to the ground because the word of god is so powerful mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. uh, that's wow. not my per that's not my personal experience my personal experience um i had i've had many but the, the one that really that i really sticks out to me is when i was 16 i went to uh, I went to church a lot, as you know, and I I was living basically my own life. I had my own little room on my own side of the house. I paid for everything myself, and so I was working, and I had to work at night. And I, on my way home, I realized I didn't have any gas in my car. And, of course, at night in Austin, Texas, I mm. stopped at, at a convenience store type place to get gas. And so I was stand, standing there. I went in, paid for my gas, came back because back then they didn't have all the automatic. You know, this was the ancient right. days. Mm -hmm. type stuff. Somebody had to be there to turn and, the pump uh, on. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So I went in, paid for my gas, and when I came out, I noticed this guy standing at the edge of the building. Mm. But I just kind of didn't pay attention really, and just went to my car and started pumping my gas. And. Mm. I turn when I turned back around from the pump, he had moved up to the gas to the gas pump uh -oh. and was standing there and um he he had something in his pocket and he said, "Hey, I've got something here that will be, make you feel really really good." Mm. And I just looked at him and I thought he doesn't look right. You know, you just get that you, the spirit, you know, you're like, yeah. this, this ain't right. There's you something not right here. And, and so I'll keep pumping. I go, no, that's okay. I'm, I feel great already. Mm -hmm. And I'm he said, well, Lord. this will, this will, this will make you, this will, this, I guarantee you, you will never experience anything like what I've got. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm start. you know, I appreciate you trying to make me feel better and everything. <laughs> but I, I have the Lord Jesus on my, and I, I don't need anything but him. He's, he's the thing that makes me feel the best of everything. And his eyes got huge. I mean, like I was, I, it was like I was threatening his life. Wow. And he started backing up and he said, Oh, I, I'm so sorry. 
I'm I'm really sorry. I won't bother you anymore. And he turned around and started running off. And I oh. I, I was like, Well geez, I, I'm not I'm not that scary <laughs> am I? And uh, and I thought about it and I thought, you know, that had to be the Lord standing behind me mm-hmm. yeah. and saying, Dude, leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She belongs to me. Mm-hmm. And you can't mm-hmm. touch her. That gave me chills. Amen. And that yeah. Yeah. Mm. The Lord was with me and the Lord has been with me multiple times. Oh yeah. Um doing that that sort of thing. So I uh one time, you know, I'm a horror film freak. I like scary movies. And uh, <laughs> my husband said to me one time, "Why do you watch this stuff? It's just so so scary and so weird." And I said, "I don't know. I guess it's that uh, greater he that's in me than he's in the world, the world. Yeah. Thing, because I'm never I don't get I don't really get scared uh, uh, I know it's kind of like I'm thumbing my nose at the devil no <laughs> but, there you go. <laughs> I'm not you scared of it because down. I know who I, I know who stand, who goes before me and I know who stands mm, behind and yeah. the the God of angel armies is on my side. Yeah. So Amen. I'm, Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so that. thankful yeah. that I that's have. A good, yeah. Yeah. Good there, you know, right sounds now. familiar, doesn't yeah, it? it does. But uh, yeah. there've been multiple one. times that there've been multiple times when God has saved me personally mm. and my family. And I'm just so grateful to know this. And I, mm-hmm. I feel pity for people that don't have that assurance in their in their faith mm-hmm. um, because that that's where the battle is raging it's 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 in spiritual realms not in our physical yeah yep well mom thanks for calling i love the stories and i love the testimony too that's amazing mm-hmm. thank you appreciate you mom all right thanks dr carla Lech on the on the line that was, uh, that was amazing <laughs> that was awesome all right so we have look we got another one already all right, all right hold on guys <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to get there as fast as Push I can. Two. I'm oh, going to call in just one. so we can hear that ringtone. That's fabulous. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't get through, if you didn't get through, be sure and call back. Uh, I'll, I will get to you as soon as I can. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so obviously we're getting some um, we're getting some good good feedback. I, I want to um, answer this question because one of the things that usually comes up with this is, first of all, can a, can a Christian be demonically possessed? Um, no. So yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Christians are indwelt by their Holy Spirit, by by, mm-hmm. by God's Holy Spirit. Yeah. So surely the Holy Spirit would not allow a demon no. to possess the same person he is indwelling. Now, I've seen a lot of people that claim to be Christian that are not Christian. Just because mm-hmm. you go to church doesn't mm-hmm. mean you're Christian anymore. Yeah. Just because you're in a garage means you're a car. Okay? Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I just think it's unthinkable that God would allow one of his children whom he he purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ uh, and made into a new creation to be possessed and controlled by demons. So Mm-mm. yes, as believers, we're we're going to wage war with Satan, uh, and and we're going to wage war with demons, and but not from within ourselves, because John declares, "You dear children are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world." Amen. So who is the one in us? The Holy Spirit. And who is the one in the world? Satan and his demons. Mm-hmm. So therefore. The believer has overcome the world of demons, and the case for demon possession of a believer yes. cannot be made scripturally at all. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make sure you understand from our perspective and from theologically, mm-hmm. you know, biblically wise, I don't believe that you can't you, you can walk both directions at the same time. Now, can you be mm-hmm. oppressed? M- maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and yes. I would say you need to be very, very careful what you're allowing to enter your mind, what you're allowing to enter, especially if you have sensitivities mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to those things. There's yes. some people that can can see things, read things, and that, that have, you know, I don't know if they've called it desensitization, but I would say that there are some people that are, are meant for uh, psychological understanding, spiritual understanding, those kind of things, have gifts of wisdom or, mm-hmm. or mercy or anything supernaturally. But I, I don't think that everybody should be delving into the world of the supernatural thinking that you were built to, um, you know, dive head first into mm-hmm. that stuff mm-hmm. um other things that we probably need to have a conversation about um miracle signs and wonders uh, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that talk about do those things exist for today mm-hmm. are they for today do you think guys i mean let's have that conversation just for a second do you think that miracle signs and wonders exist today yes oh yeah do you think they happen today yes. my mama what what about your mom uh, the fact that my mother is here 
yeah. is a miracle. Um, gosh, what was that? 26, 2016, 2015? Uh, Cheryl and I were out of town and on we, your way out of town. Were you already we, there? Yeah, we were, we were already there. Yeah. We were in Abilene for a speaking engagement and, uh, I get the phone call. Cheryl's my wife, by the way, um, that my mother has fallen and she has broken her hip. She's on her way to the hospital. Um, wow. and they are doing tests and she has a massive tumor in the bone Mm. Uh, in her hip, which is what caused caused it to break in half. Mm. Um, and so as we, of course, before I get off the phone call, Cheryl's got the car loaded back up and we're, I mean, we're You're speeding bit, down I-20. And I mean speeding. They speeding, were flying. Mm-hmm. Yes, we had, we had some angelic mercies. But in the meantime. But in the meantime, uh, the hospital is running all these tests and they're like okay we're we're gonna have to take out the hip you've got this massive tumor we need to get get you into surgery mm-hmm. and uh our friend a uh, nur- nurse practitioner is telling cheryl you you need to prepare joanna you need to have this conversation because if this cancer has made it to the bone that means that it has originated somewhere else and it, if it is if it's, it's this bad if it's in the bone this much she is probably going to be eaten up with cancer and you oh you need to prepare joanna for what she's walking wow. into and um at that i mean as soon as the word cancer is thrown out there everybody freaks out yeah you yeah. know i'm i'm on the phone with tim uh, and you, i couldn't get i was sick yeah you were sick scotty was sick yep um, we, we called the big guns in. Yeah, so we called Miss D. Miss mm-hmm. D came up to the hospital because I said, I, I need I need somebody there. Mom didn't go to our church. She didn't know you guys very well. Um, but but let me fill in here because in this conversation, I, I tell them there's no way I'm, I'm going to that hospital in the condition that I'm in. I need to call somebody that can make it. Scotty's sick. I'm sick. Mm-hmm. So I called D and I'm like, Miss D, uh, I need prayer warrior to go up there and be with Fran. Nobody's there. Mm-hmm. Joanna's out. Cheryl's out. I'm sick. Scotty's sick. And it wasn't comfortable for Miss D either because she didn't know yeah, who Fran was. My mom. Yeah. But Miss D is that, that kind of person. Uh-huh. So as soon as she got the assignment, she understood the assignment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was crazy because she had had a full schedule that day. And God woke her up early that morning and was telling her, free your calendar. And then this canceled. And then she moved this somewhere else. And so God literally freed wow. up her entire day so wow. that when the phone call came in, she could immediately get up to the hospital. Wow. wow. So she gets up to the hospital. She's with my mom while Cheryl and I are on our way back. And that's a story on its own because yeah, Fran does not know Dee. Yeah, because mom has no idea. She, Who are you she's again? She's very drugged up. She's coming out of hip surgery. Um and she's kind of drugged up, and she looks up, and there's D with her like gray spiked hair, and you know her <laughs> kimonos and stuff, you know, because D's just so unique. Mm-hmm. And mom looks up, and she's like, "Uh, who are you?" <laughs> and she's like, "I'm D." She goes, "Oh, who are you?" <laughs> and, You're here, why? And uh, she said, "I'm I'm from Crossroads." Joanna asked me to come be here with you. And she, oh okay you know like whatever and she kind of goes back to sleep you know and uh so in the meantime d is laying hands i mean she is beating the door of heaven for my mom we all are but there and um Mm -hmm. my mom kind of wakes up and she says she just she just felt something come over her and so they're they're running all these tests trying to find where this tumor originated, where the cancer originated, and they take her back for testing the first time. They're like, "Hmm. Okay, let's let's do that again." Mm-hmm. So they take her back again, run all these tests. They ran all these tests 3 times before mm-hmm. they finally came in and said, "We can't find any cancer Nothing. anywhere." Wow. Nowhere. At all. Yep. That's a miracle. And we can't figure this out. Why? Mm-hmm. They couldn't understand. Dang. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They couldn't That's figure God. out what was going on. And mom mom looks at the nurses and she goes, oh, I know exactly what happened. 
God cured me. And, you know, a couple of them were like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah. then it's like you have this oncologist that's kind of going, uh, she she may be right. <laughs> yeah. We can't explain it. So, And she, she has never, I mean, she went in every six months for four years, and she has never, ever, ever had another sign of cancer ever. Praise the Lord. Wow. So, yep. So wow. I, I think sometimes, um, and, and hear me out, those of you that are listening, um, I, the reason why we don't see more miracle signs and wonders is because we tend to have all of our own answers. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've kind of put things and money and possessions and medicines and all this other stuff. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying that we put them in a spot that give us answers quicker than what it would be if we relied on the Lord. Although mm-hmm. the Lord can do a whole lot more of an effective job, we tend to get our own answers because we don't want to wait and we get scared in the process. And there's something to be said about faith when you don't... I, I remember Scotty telling a story about a, a, an African man that came to one of his churches and they were riding around and they were talking about uh, how wonderful God was moving in Africa and how many healings were taking place, dead being raised. And of course, the skeptic is going, well, that's all just hogwash and stuff like that. But the African man was talking about it and the pastor interrupted him and said, man, how how come you're seeing all this in Africa and we're just lucky to mm-hmm. see somebody, you know, walking around or, you know, get saved or something like that. And he goes, he goes friend, in America, you believe in God. In America, you believe in God. In mm-hmm. Africa, we depend on him. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. good. Wow. And so the difference between that meant, mm-hmm. so you say, well, I don't see miracle signs and wonders. Well, are you depending on him? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's probably where we need to be asking the questions. Are yeah. we, if our first reaction, we talked about that Sunday, mm-hmm. if the first reaction is to find your own answers, then you're mm-hmm. trying to be your own God. The mm-hmm. whole point is to trust him in these situations so that you could be con- mm-hmm. be content in little or much like Philippians yeah. 4 talks about. All right, here's another question. Are there such things as ghosts? Yes, there are in the Bible um, with, with the witches of Endor. And I know you think that Endor is a planet in Star Wars. I know I did. But no, when Saul <laughs> gets desperate, uh, Samuel has passed away and he wants to communicate with the prophet of God. Even though Samuel had passed away, he goes to the witches of Endor and he has them invoke something and bring Samuel out of the ground and Samuel harshly, firmly, authoritatively rebukes the snot out of Saul. And uh, there's a big story behind that. Are there ghosts? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there things, do you need to be trying to commune with ghosts? No, no. No. Mm -hmm. Don't open that door. No. You don't know what's going to come through. No. Mm -hmm. You people that are out there buying Ouija boards and trying to figure out that, just stop it. Just Mm -mm. stop it. Quit it. You don't need mm-hmm. to be doing it. You mm-hmm. don't need to be getting involved in that no. stuff. And you're like, well, I'm just really curious. Well, fine. Curiosity killed the cat, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So get off that stuff, okay? Um, yeah. if, if you want to talk spiritual things, listen to a podcast like this, mm-hmm. and let's talk biblically about how to deal with those things. But ghosts are not things, mm-hmm. unless God sends a vision or the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, mm-hmm. then then there's a different, there's a different story there. But mm-hmm. I don't think... And, and hear me on this. I don't believe that Holy Spirit will do anything outside of the Word of God. That's right. And I don't mm-hmm. believe that there will be, and boy, I'm going to step off in it, there's going to be revelation that goes outside the Word of God either. Mm-hmm. All right? So you need to be very careful. All you um, so-called, quote-unquote, prophets and, quote-unquote, dreamers and visionaries and all that stuff, mm-hmm. that you don't start speaking out of context and out of turn from the Word of God. You have yeah. got to mm-hmm. regulate yourself on the basis of the Word of God. And if you're trying to write another testament, honey, you need to get you need to be rebuked. I'm just saying. All right. Can I commune with someone who has passed? on that was close to me because mm. so i have a story about this um there was a guy uh that um frequented um crossroads community church um lovingly called himself bear um and i'm not afraid to call it out i'm not going to call his real name out but mm. i will call this other name out um and he would frequent crossroads and when he did it was always <laughs> interesting the way that he would come in the first time he came in he came in stumbling and on a on a on a cane and his leg was all wrapped up and bandaged, bandaged up because he had gotten in a fight before um and there was there's a lot of stuff that had happened in between there but he there was another time where he walked in and had a wooden knife and was trying to teach the kids how to stab somebody mm. um and how the blood would go inside this groove that was in the knife 
Anyway, oh so gosh. oh yeah, it was it was fun, very charming, very charming. Anyway, so to say the least, we we didn't rebuke him for being in there. Uh, we just asked him not to do that kind of stuff, and we were totally fine with it. Just as we would be with anybody that was coming in, we we're going to protect our kids, yeah. and we're going to watch over our kids and over the people there. But we feel like this is a place where people should be able to walk in and to find Jesus mm-hmm. where they're at. Um, I don't need to change your shirt before you walk in. You come as you are, and we'll let the Lord deal with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, he came for about three or four weeks in a row um, and wanted to talk to me some, and we began to talk a little bit, and then he disappeared. I don't know what happened. I don't know where he went, but he disappeared. Mm-hmm. So one night, and it was pretty it was pretty late. We had just gotten mm-hmm. done with a, 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 a practice um, me and Jim Pat D's husband, Jim mm-hmm. Patton, was there, and we were closing up, and we were talking about something, and all of a sudden, guess who walks through the door? Um, Bear. And we had seen him at an Enchanted Lakes block party, mm-hmm. and he came around and got came back into the house, and he had been convicted about something, and he wanted to talk to me about this certain thing. And so we went and we sat at the desk uh, in, in the office, and he began to unfold kind of his life story i'm not going to explain all of it but he had a sister that he had lost long long time ago and he loved his sister and he was having a hard time letting that go Mm. and he started to tell us that he was able to communicate to her in his trailer every night before he went to bed Mm -hmm. and Mm. me and jim kind of looked at each other Mm. and i said bear i don't i don't know if this is I don't know if you're talking to your sister. And he goes, well, what do you mean? And I said, are you sure this is this thing that you're talking to is your sister? And he looked at me and he, he, he thought for a second and he goes, well, she sounds like my sister and it feels like it's my sister. And I said, so what, what kind of things is this person telling you to do? And he went into a couple of things and none of them were, were good things. And uh, I said, I, I just don't, I don't think that something that would be positive or sent by God would be asking you to do these things. And he thought for a second and he goes, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, well, I think we should pray. And I think we should pray mm-hmm. over you. And I think we should pray that the Lord remove this thing if it's not from him. Otherwise, did, but we can pray that God would show a sign that it would be okay, but I don't think this is from him. And he goes, okay, okay, let's let's pray over this thing and and." Are you, are you telling me that, that, that it might go away if you pray? And I said, well, I'm telling you that I'm pretty positive that if we pray that this entity will no longer communicate with you. And he sat for a minute. I said, do you want us to pray? And he sat for another minute, kind of looked down. And he goes, yeah, yeah, let's pray. As soon as I began praying, and I'm not kidding you when this happened, we're sitting there, me and Jim both are sitting there, and he goes, stop. And I go, what? He goes, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want you to do this anymore. I don't want you to. I want, I don't want this to happen. I, I, I need, I need to talk to my sister. I need to talk to my sister. And I said, y- you realize that you're inviting this presence into your home, into your life, and you're allowing this to continue. I, I don't think this is a positive thing for you. I don't care. I need to talk to my sister. I said, well, can we pray over you so that you can be free of this? And he goes, man, I don't know why I even come over here. Blah blah. blah. He gets really mad. Gets mm-hmm. up and starts pounding on the desk and jim's like whoa, whoa, whoa we're just trying to pray for you man he walks out and goes out into the street and we don't see him again he, we go down the road trying to try, trying to find him trying to pick him up trying to take him back can't find him he's gone mm-hmm. haven't seen him since he did not want prayer i'm going to tell you right now the odds of you communicating with somebody who mm-hmm. is dead mm. Um, There are mediums that are mentioned in the Bible, and every time that there are mediums that are mentioned in the Bible, it is mentioned as you do not need to be talking to these people. You don't need to be talking Mm -mm. to mediums and Mm -mm. getting into the sorcery and getting into witchcraft and those kinds of things. You don't Mm -mm. need to go to psychics, because I'm going to tell you, you're inviting voices into your life Mm -hmm. that may or may not be good for you. So I want you to stop playing with that kind of Mm. fire. All right. Um, and, and that being said, if there's any questions that you guys have got out there in Facebook world or even mm-hmm. on uh, the live podcast, again, you have our number 493-87-903, 493-87. Call us. And if you have a question, go ahead and ask that question. Otherwise, uh, I want to 
I want to tell you that we really, really enjoy the opportunity to talk to you about these things. I know that some of the topics that we talk about are harder mm -hmm. and more difficult. Is there anything else you guys want to add while we're, we're waiting, maybe? Anything you guys want to talk about? Any questions that you guys have got about spiritual things that you might want to hash out? I don't mm -hmm. think so. No, I think yeah. we hashed them all out pretty yeah, good. It's pretty good, yeah. man. Pretty good podcast. Mm -hmm. And if you got mm -hmm. any questions, call, leave a message. If I don't get in touch with you right off the top, but um, we'll we'll be able to answer your questions, anyways. Anyways, I want to make sure and tell you how thankful we are for the opportunity yes. to enter your way, to enter your lives in the by way of this mm -hmm. podcast. Thanks for listening, and thanks for being a part of the conversation. By the yes. way, and calling in, yes. mm -hmm. uh, we want to yeah. thank Calls. Crossroads Community Church of Lindale for sponsoring this podcast and allowing us the opportunity to broadcast to you from this incredible podcast mm -hmm. studio. Um, next month we're going to have about three podcasts and then we will be taking our extended winter break go ahead you got some joe sorry i do i so <coughs> ashley asked do you think that angels walk among us and i said well the bible says we entertain Can them entertain without them. knowing it and she yeah. said do you think they walk in human form yeah yes yeah yeah i do huh. i think sometimes um i, I um I think sometimes you're aware. I think sometimes you're not aware. I think, um, like, I don't know if you've ever heard the podcast um, where my grandfather was on, and he was in Jamaica, uh, and he was walking in streets with my mm -hmm. grandmother, and there had been murders. Um, a deacon was murdered from the church in Jamaica, and they were doing a, a rally there, an evangelistic rally, and he were on the, the lights had gone out from a huge storm, and they were on their way back to the hotel, walking the street in the dark, and they ran into somebody who had gone out come come out in front of them and was just standing in their way and um they had to stop and when they looked up he said all i could see was the whites of the teeth and they were they weren't moving and so he simply grabbed of course grandma 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 is known for prayer but this is grandma's prayer. She's going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's that's what she's doing, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. So she's got, obviously, her arm around his arm, and, and, you know, she's a little nervous, and he just kind of walks by, and the guy kind of moves out of the way, and he goes to the, to the hotel. And the next night, they're at the rally, and there's, I guess, a, a lady or something that saw, I don't remember the story. You need to go back and listen to the podcast because it's mm -hmm. a great podcast about radical protection. Radical mm -hmm. protection. Radical yeah. protection. That's, I uh, think, number three or number two. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, one of season two. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he says they go back to the rally the next day, and then a woman comes up and she goes, How did you get the hotel guards to walk with you from the, the rally? And he goes, We didn't have any hotel guards with us. She goes, well, there was a guy that was there. They were going to, I think they were going to mug you. And there were like three or four uniformed guards that were standing behind you. And that's why that man moved out of the way. And grandpa had no idea. But angels obviously mm -hmm. were, were there and mm -hmm. protecting. Okay, so you, you yeah, just yeah. don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. You just don't yeah. know. Now, uh, uh, could could it be that uh, and man i'm going to tell you right now the way that we treat people nowadays mm -hmm. be careful uh, you need to be careful because you just don't Better know be kind. That, that guy that's on the street that's holding the sign and you've gotten cynical and god moves on your heart to do something you just don't know mm -hmm. you don't know you have no idea um mm -hmm. who you're messing with or what you're so just go in it with an attitude of uh, as uh, what i'm doing i'm doing is under the lord yeah mm -hmm. and as you treat the least of these you treat the lord and i think mm -hmm. that you you'll never miss that opportunity but yeah that's a great question i, I honestly believe question. that angels are around and that they're actively participating and that they're they're around i also believe that there are demons mm -hmm. uh, by the way for those of you that are in tyler let me take this moment to oh don't glorify that i'm not going to i'm just going to tell you that it is out here um, there are uh, rallies right now to unbaptize people and to um, bring uh, people out of Christianity that are happening in Tyler. Wow. Um, you think that Sicky. it's not happening, but it is happening all around us. There is a movement outside of Christianity uh, called deconstruction, um, and it's, it's terrible. It's hideous. It's hitting our kids. And now the, the Church of Satan is coming out from DFW and trying to do these unbaptisms. And I'm just telling you, I'm as a as a pastor, not only sickening, sickening, but I'm I'm gonna tell you something. I, I don't I don't think it's for not. I think that God will use these things to 
there be an uprising of Christianity, um, not not the religion, but the relational aspects of mm-hmm. with Christ. That's what I hope happens, because we've had so many events and we've had so many big mega churches, and we, I'm I think the world is now looking for real relational Christians that love mm-hmm. Jesus. You, sure, mm-hmm. they go to church. Fine, that's that's fine. Wherever you go to church is fine. That, yeah. but. It's more important that you are walking out this relationship with Christ in your personal life Mm -hmm. more than it is about you selling somebody on going to a place or going to an event Mm -hmm. or going to these things that are, are, are marketing strategies to promote an evangelist or something else. Just see through the show. I want you to get to the realism of relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that all evangelists are bad. I'm not saying that all mega churches are bad. And I'm not saying that all churches are bad. I'm just saying that if you personally are do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ at home, then that's part of the problem. Um, mm-hmm. Don't yeah. delegate the responsibility to your pastor at church. Mm-hmm. You need to be standing for that in your home. Mm-hmm. And then you won't have the, the supernatural problems and the, the fear when it comes to Satan and all these other mm-hmm. things that, that are trying to get any Anybody else have anything to add to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I'm not going to glorify that, but I am going to talk out about it. Yeah, um, we need to pray against it. Yeah, we do definitely, definitely need to be praying about it. All right, so we will have three podcasts next month, and then after that, we're going to go on our extended winter break. So you got three more podcasts from us for the year of 2022, and then we will start probably mid January back uh, with season four, and uh, we'll be delving into hard topics like we always do, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we're probably one of them that we've we've been talking about in church in class is the difference between murder and killing. And uh, oh we'll probably uh, be, be uh, talking about oh, some wow. stuff like that. All right. So um, uh, until we get to that, um, I just want to tell you, thank you again for letting us come in. And yeah. until we come back to yeah. you next week, this is Todd Bergen. This is Steve Howard. It's Joanna Grace. This is PT. And when no one has told you, God loves you so, so much. And so do we, we hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time. God bless you.